Welcome back, audit fans, to my series on the international and Australian auditing standards. And today we're looking at ISA, ASA 250, which is to do with laws and regulations that we might encounter in our clients and their environments. Now, why is this important? Well, this is really important because we have to make sure that our clients are complying with laws relating to financial reporting, but we may also discover information about how they are complying with other laws and regulations. That could be occupational health and safety, it could be environmental, um, it could be antitrust regulations or competition regulations. So it's important that we understand these legal ramifications. Now, as always, we know that ISA 250 and ASA 250, those two conform. Um, and there are a few extra sen uh, sections with the AUS standard um, that do not apply for the international. And uh, specifically, there's some areas in regards to the Whistleblowers and Corporations Act and our professional oversight or regulator. We still use the same terms and all of the same information. So let's dig in to looking at the scope. And remember, the scope is the, the explanation of this is what our standard is about. So it's my responsibility as the auditor to consider laws and regulations. It doesn't apply to other assurance, but remember that laws and regulations vary a lot. So we have to specifically look at the laws related to these particular companies. And that's why it's really important in a lot of audit firms that you understand your industry because a lot of laws and regulations are industry specific. Now, of course, like management's responsibility to prepare the financial statements, it's management's responsibility to make sure that they follow any laws or regulations as well. But we are checking um, whether there is any material misstatements in the financial report due to the fact that they have not complied. So there could be potentially uh, fines, there could be lawsuits, or other costs associated with non-compliance and potential government prosecution. So what is the auditor not responsible for? There's a really important section just here. And it says, the auditor is not responsible for preventing non-compliance. So we're not responsible for making sure that they're following the laws, but if there are, they are missing out on doing something, or if there's a mis uh, financial implication, then we are uh, obliged to investigate. So we need to make sure that um, we are looking for any potential misstatements arising from non-compliance of laws. The auditing standards do actually differentiate between different types of laws. So there are two different categories of laws. The first one is those that are going to have a direct effect on material amounts and disclosures in the financial report. So these could be tax and superannuation laws. Other laws might be ones that do not have a direct effect, but if they fail to comply with them, um, then non-compliance might have a material effect on the financial report. Now that you'll see here, there's some extra materials. Now, this little section here refers to the explanatory material and paragraph 15. For our uh, direct effects like tax and superannuation, paragraph 14 and explanatory paragraph 12. Now, it's important to remember or to note that there are different requirements for each of these categories. So depending on whether you're looking at 6A or 6B, the auditor has different requirements. So let's jump in to those specific parts of the standard. So we go through the objectives and there's some definitions here, but what we want to jump into is the requirements. So here we are at the requirements. So the auditor has to consider laws, compliance with laws and regulation, um, and so Part of this will link back, or link forward, I guess, to ASA 315, and 315 is really critical. It says we should understand the client, and that includes the legal and regulatory framework and how the firm actually complies with that framework. But the bit that requires the auditor to know what to do is down here in section 14. 
So, the auditor shall obtain sufficient appropriate evidence regarding compliance with laws and regulations that have a direct effect. So I have to collect sufficient and appropriate evidence about tax and superannuation law and make sure that they're complying with those. When it comes to other laws and regulations, I have to help identify instances of non-compliance that might have a material effect, oops, wrong uh, pen there, material effect on the financial report. So if we've not complied with a law and regulation, there may be uh, fines from a licensing or regulatory authority. There might be some sort of court case that could go on that could result in something that needs to be disclosed. Now, remember that the auditor covers a lot of information during the audit. If we do suspect something, I have to remain alert to the possibility that we might have non-compliance or suspected non-compliance. And that if we do find that there are potential instances, we should talk with those charged with governance to provide written representations about what's been going on and what effects should be considered when preparing the financial statement. So we ask them, have you engaged in any activity that could result in um, some non-compliance with laws that we do need to know about? Now, what happens if we suspect non-compliance um, well, we need to first off do some investigation, so understand what's going on, evaluate the effect on the financial report, and discuss the matter with the appropriate level of management. So you would go to the board of directors or the executive in charge or the audit committee um, about what this situation is in regards to if you think there is non-compliance. Now, if you do think the company is involved in an illegal act, then you are required to notify the authorities. Here in this section, it says communicating and identif or reporting identified non-compliance. If uh, we should always talk to those charged with governance first, uh, we should consider any implications for the audit report. But if it is something that is a criminal act, then we do need to make sure that we think about notifying the authorities. And the reason that we do um, is that if we don't notify the authorities, there is the potential that the auditor may be obstructing justice and helping the client hide or obfuscate from law enforcement. So it's important that we do, in this situation, seek our own legal advice. So that's it for ASA 250. Um, if you have any questions about compliance with laws, then uh, please make sure you pop them in the comments and I'll answer them as best I can. Thanks for watching. If you thought the video was useful, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Click to subscribe and the notification bell to get future updates. Thanks for watching. Music